Thank you, everyone. Um, I wanted to address that very important um, event before we started on our very uh, happy event of celebrating Tu B'Shvat. So thank you, Rabbi Jordana, for those wonderful words. Um, welcome, everyone. This is our second annual Tu B'Shvat Seder. We, of course, had planned to do this in person, but the world has not cooperated. I've chosen the theme of perseverance for today. Despite Omicron, we are gathering and enjoying the space together. This afternoon, we will not just celebrate Tu B'Shvat. The birthday of the trees will celebrate us because like trees, we're resilient and we can grow to great heights. We'll discover some similarities of each of, each of us and trees have in common. Trees persevere in many different environments. We have to adapt to a new normal and keep that in mind as we go through the Seder. To fortify our spirits, we will be integrating a wine tasting or juice led by fellow sisterhood member, Melissa Williams of One Hope Napa Valley Winery. You'll meet Melissa in a little bit, but make sure to have your wine glasses and your four wines or juices and your coordinating fruits ready from your swag bag. Each bottle is marked with a number and Melissa will guide you through the tasting. We'd like to thank her for the generosity in sharing the cost of the wine with us today. We hope you like your Seder swag bags. We worked very hard on them. Included are all the elements you need to participate and a few extras. You can refer to the card in close to describe the pairings. There's also a blessing sheet, which is right here, as um, well as some of the readings that you'll hear this afternoon. A special thanks to Louise Abramson, Linda Hewitt, Risa Friedman, Dana Parker, Andrea Burnett, and Dodie Stein for helping us to assemble the bags and organizing the pickup. And thank you to Benny Silver for the delicious date bars that you will find in your bag. The Seder gives us an opportunity um, as if we need an excuse to share some treats. Think of ways that you have persevered at this new year of the trees and for each of as it begins for each of us. We will also use Zoom breakout rooms so we can get to know each other a little better and have a bit of conversation and connection. And the facilitators will be Bonnie Foster, Andrea Burnett, Karen Rawson, Sarah Cox, Louise Abramson, Linda Hewitt, and Carol Bogar. Before we get started, we want to thank each of you for spending the afternoon with us. Your devotion to sisterhood makes for our incredible organization stronger, which in turn gives us strength. Thank you to all the women who volunteered or were volunteered to be part of this Seder today. We will have some readings, and in the order that they come, there will be Bonnie Foster, Dana Parker, Dodie Stein, Risa Friedman, Andrea Burnett, Sarah Cox, Victoria Khan, and I will do the last reading. Last but not least, thank you to Sonia and to Rabbi Jordana um, to help co-create this event. So with that, Rabbi Jordana, you're up. Great, thank you. So as you know, Jewish history is all about perseverance. When we are looking for the theme of it, it felt so fitting. Because if you think about it, it is truly, truly remarkable that we are still sitting here as Jews today. Throughout history, there have been numerous times when Judaism could have ended, but it didn't. And Jews have adapted and persisted and come back even stronger. We know that we are living through, unfortunately, we are living through another moment when we need some perseverance, but we are doing so. We thought that COVID was over, but unfortunately, that is not the case. But even with its reappearance, we are persisting. We are finding new ways to connect. We are creating community and even adding new layers to this ancient holiday. Today is a perfect example of mixing old and new traditions together, celebrating a Tu B'Shvat Seder in this way. In Hebrew, two means 15, and Shvat is the name of the month in which it falls. This is late winter, and it shows the shift of the seasons, at least getting a little bit closer <laughs> to spring, which hopefully will happen soon. <laughs> and there's sap in the trees, and it is beginning to rise. And in the land of Israel, things really are blooming. 
I do see that this holiday does make a lot more sense in California when it is warm and there are things in bloom. Um, but, but that is okay. We know that, that at least spring is beginning to come here, which is hopeful and exciting. But throughout this moment, it is a perfect time for some contemplation. We are living in what's known as the Shabbat or the Shemitah year. So outlined in the Torah was this year of rest. Every seven years was supposed to be a year of rest for the land. It was this opportunity for the land to lay fallow, to rest, and to kind of gather itself up again, ready to be replanted. And the same can be said for us. We need to take the time to rest, to allow ourselves to be fallow, to, to connect, to contemplate, to stop all of the busyness. And when we do, then we can be ready to really truly be there for our community and to be there for the world around us. We know when we do this, then we can really truly once again help with tikkun olam, repairing the world and protecting the earth as we are so instructed in Genesis 2. One way of honoring this persistence and this idea of repairing the world is through a tubishmat seder like we are doing today. This highlights our deep dependence on the earth and seder as you know from Passover means order. This is a modern tradition, but it's the idea of celebrating Tu Bishvat goes all the way back to ancient Israel. In ancient Israel, Tu Bishvat, tu Bishvat marked the new year for the trees, which was the very beginning of the year, which was assessing the fruits to be tithed. In later years, this was, became a holiday to celebrate the feast of fruits and nuts and the trees and everything all around us. The Kabbalists first adopted this Tubishvat Seder, which included wine and fruit and all sorts of texts and things to enjoy. Consuming these fruits on this day became, is, was linked with this idea of Kavanah, of intention. And it was believed that if we did the Kavanah right, if we really thought, if we were really able to get into a deep place in ourselves, then divine sparks would be flowing as we enjoyed the fruits of the land and we would spread a greater harmony all around us. In modern time, Tu Bishvat has really been adopted as an environmental tool of activism. We know we've already been doing some things about that at Temple this, for this Tu Bishvat. In Israel, it is a national holiday when people go out and plant trees. And we know that trees will be planted here again when we, as soon as we can do that. In the simplest form, Tu Bishvat is always thought of as the birthday of the trees. Even young children know how much fun it can be to get out there and celebrate the trees and sometimes even give them a birthday cake. So today is a theme of the Tu Bishvat Seder is perseverance. We are persevering. We are celebrating. We are gathering together today on Zoom and we are persisting. We are together in this way and we will celebrate and we will learn together and appreciate not only our connection, but the world around us as well. So let us begin with this Tu Bishvat Seder today. I would like to invite Bonnie Foster, a past sisterhood president, and our amazing new-ish <laughs> give a shop a decorator, a, a director, to um, offer our very first reading. Bonnie, if you will. Sure. Everything is still. Trees lie in contemplation, gathering their strength. Take a moment now to listen to the silence. Feel the sap rising. Leaves will soon unfurl, breathing life into us. Life to life to life. Take a moment now to listen to your breathing. Form your intention. Beautiful, thank you. As we move throughout the Seder, we will also look at different parts of the tree. We begin with the roots. The roots are what hold the tree in place. It is like the people who came before us, parents, grandparents, and future and past generations going all the way back. And thinking about the roots of trees, we can also think about ourselves. We can contemplate our own roots. So I ask you now to think about what are, what are your roots? What or who has fostered growth and love in you? And especially in these difficult moments, where you find that things are the people that ground you. I invite you now to put an answer into the chat if you would like to. What or who are the people in your life who ground you? Who or what are your roots? Ruth, if you will. I'm up. I wanted to make sure I wasn't muted. At this time, I'd like to introduce Melissa Williams. 
Some of you may have met her already at our Thanksgiving sip and shop. Melissa, would you please tell us about One Hope and our tastings today? Yes, yes, I will indeed. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. It's so nice to be here with you. So for those of you that I haven't met, I am Melissa Williams. Um, as stated, I am a member of IHC um, and also a representative for One Hope Wine. Um, so for those of you that are not familiar with One Hope, I will tell you, um, I was not either a couple of years ago and feels like it fell in my lap. Um, a friend invited me over for a wine tasting and I fell in love with the wine and the company. And here I am uh, a little over two years later and it is a, a major part of, of my life. Um, so One Hope is a Napa Valley winery. Our mission is to change the world with wine that gives back. Um, it doesn't get any better than that, right? <laughs> um, so we were started, I'll, I'll tell you just really briefly, um, by six friends um, who were fresh out of college. Um, they were working in the wine industry, uh, specifically stocking grocery store shelves and negotiating uh, shelf space. And our CEO, um, our now CEO, had a couple of observations. So one, um, it was the month of October, um, the whole store turned pink for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And he noticed that there were no wine brands that were giving back. There were no wine brands that turned pink. And then when November hit, all the pink went away. And he was pretty struck by the fact that giving back should happen all the time and not just isolated points of time during the year. Um, around that same time, a friend of his, a woman who was you know, in her mid-20s, was diagnosed with lymphoma. And all of those things um, really prompted him to put his ideas on paper and tap on the shoulders of five of his friends. And now, long story, medium length, they quit their jobs, they pulled their money, and they started selling wine out of the trunks of their cars. And the model from day one was that every bottle makes a donation. And while we started with three varietals and three specific causes, we've grown to many, many more uh, varietals and we've given back to uh, 2,500, I think, different nonprofits at this point. Um, we actually in November met our $8 million give back milestone, which is really exciting. Um, and some of you were a part of that. So the way it works is that um, every bottle, like I said, makes a donation to uh, I call it a built-in donation to the One Hope Foundation that then donates to a number of nonprofits. In addition to that, through specific ordering links and events, we get to choose what nonprofits get an additional 10%. So this wine that we're drinking tonight that we're tasting, as well as the wine that some of you ordered at our Thanksgiving uh, sip and shop events, um, has already made a donation to IHC Sisterhood. Um, we have donated or raised $40 so far for Sisterhood. Um, and that's how this works. So um, tonight we have four um, varietals that we match to um, the portions of the Seder. And we've picked out um, some things to taste with them. I'm going to admit I have not taste tested, and although some of them match the tasting recommendations, some of them match the Seder, so we'll all explore together and see if they go. <laughs> um, but I'll kind of share um, as we go about the wines and about the tasting profiles and how to taste it all that. Um, let's see, Sonia or Ruth, do I leave anything out? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think okay, so. Perfect. Okay, perfect. Okay, we will continue. So if you haven't already, um, opened your bag with your wine in it. You could take out the first bottle, marked number one, and pour your cup of juice or wine. Um, have your fruits and your wine all ready. If you need, if you need a cheat sheet, this is the cheat sheet. Um, and for our first reading today, I would like to introduce Dana Parker. There is hope for a tree. If it is cut down, it will renew itself. Its shoots will not cease. Job 14, that seven through nine. The humble seed, so tiny and helpless, falls to the earth and awaits its fate. 
but being beaten down and ground into dirt is not an ending or the beginning. They tried to bury us. They didn't know we were seeds. Mexican proverb. Thank you. So in addition to this lovely wine that I'm um, excited about tasting soon, we also have uh, fruits that we eat throughout the Seder. And the first one that we eat is a fruit that has neither a hard shell that protects them nor a pit that shapes them. They're completely edible, but somehow they are vulnerable, but in completely soft, yet still they thrive. The Kabbalists teach us that we chew the fruit with the right intention, and then again, these divine sparks will come shining through. And again, this single act will help us achieve this idea of tikkun olam, of repairing the world. So if you can go ahead and look in your, book, in your bags, your fruit should have neither a hard shell nor a pit to be eaten. So this can be like grapes or figs, apples, pears, quince, strawberries, carrots, etc. But And today we have selected figs and grapes for you, so go ahead and get those ready. So I really think now is a fabulous opportunity to say the Shekhiani together for so many reasons. To We are gathering together. We are here. We are enjoying this day. We are celebrating. It's a beautiful sunny day. There's so much to be thankful for. So please say it with me. Uh, if you want to unmute yourself to say it with me, go ahead and do that. If you want to not and say it with me, on, that is okay too. Either way, what is most comfortable, please join me. Baruch. We thank you, God, ruler of the universe, who has given us life, who has sustained us, and enabled us to reach this day, this moment in time. So now if you can get your fruit ready, I see some people are already enjoying their fruit and that is great. <laughs> Go ahead and enjoy them, bring it on. Um, but as we eat this fruit, let's really re-appreciate the taste of this wonderful fruit. And all, hopefully through this fruit and thinking about ourselves and our lives, we pair both our, our vulnerabilities and our persistence together. And we know that together this will open new possibilities for us. So again, please join me in the blessing. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Ha'olam Borei Pari Ha'aretz. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, so get your uh, cup of wine poured. Before um, we do the first tasting, I'd like to introduce Dodi Stein to say the blessing over the wine. You're muted, Dodi. I'm sorry, I thought I was unmuted. We start with our first glass of wine or juice, a sweet white wine to remind us of winter. The trees are asleep, silently gathering their strength. May we too find strength and tranquility in the winter months. We are thankful for the seasons, for the trees and for the fruit of the vine. Please join me in our blessing. Baruch Hata Ranai Elhenu Melakaulam Bore Pri Hagafen. Thank you. Melissa, would you tell us about this first tasting of Moscata? Absolutely. So this first glass is the Moscato. If you're drinking juice, you should be, you should have your white grape juice. Um, so has anybody, maybe just in the chat, or you can actually, if you know how to do the raise your hand function, has anybody done a wine tasting before and or know the three S's of wine tasting? Yeah, does anyone want to put in the chat what those S's are? Maybe I'll give you a minute. <laughs> All right, I don't see anybody coming in the chat, that's okay. So the three S's of tasting are to swirl your wine, which kind of aerates it, lets the flavors unfold, to sniff. So you're supposed to take like a, like get your nose in there and take a big old whiff. And then depending on how fancy you are, the third one can be to spit, which is what a sommelier might do, but we're going to sip. 
And that introduces the flavor, obviously, to our palate. So that sniffing and sipping together really introduce the full flavor. So again, this is our Moscato. It is a very sweet wine. Um, does anyone want to put in the chat what they taste or smell in this one? Any guesses? I'm terrible at it. I only know because... I have the winemaker's notes. <laughs> no guesses? All right, well, this one um, is has aromas of orange blossom and citrus. So I'm not sure if you get any of that kind of citrus. Um, and then has sweet flavors of candy lemon and nectarine. So maybe some of you get some of that. Um, and then the pairing suggestions are dried apricots. Marcona almonds, aged Gouda cheese, and honeycomb. So that is the Moscato. If you are um, a sweet wine drinker, this one is very popular. We have a sparkling Moscato as well, which is equally as sweet, but has some bubbles to it. Um, and definitely super popular among our sweet wine lovers. So hope you enjoyed that one. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I appreciate that lesson. And it is one of the only times in leading something for a temple that spit has been involved. So, you know, that's a, that's a new one. Um, so now we are going to uh, continue on with our Seder. And it, just so you know, very shortly, we will be drinking our second glass of wine. So if you want to get your bottle number two or grape juice, get your number two ready. And also, if you want to get out your olives with pits, um, we are going to be needing that um, in just a moment as well. But next, we think about, we begin to make our way up the trunk of the tree. And we really think about the trunk as representing the core or the stability of the tree. It is really a lot of where the strength of the tree comes from. And we think about ourselves often as the, the trunks of our families and our communities. We are the pillars of strength. We are forming connection between the past generations of the roots and the branches which are coming. They, that represents the future. So in addition, not only is the trunk the strength of it, but also the trunk holds the story of the trees. Like we are often the ones who keep the stories of our families and our communities of our organizations. We keep the history and we persist and we add our new layer to that story each and every year in new ways. So as we think about the trunks of the trees and the trunks that we represent in our lives, it is my great pleasure to turn it over to Risa Friedman, our Sisterhood President, to share a reading with us. Good afternoon. Between every two pine trees, there is a door leading to a new way of life. And that's attributed to John Muir, a naturalist. The wilderness holds answers to more questions than you have yet learned to ask. And that is from Nancy Wynne Newhall, uh, a wildly, widely published writer on photography, conservation, and American culture. Thank you. So now if you've had your opportunity to grab your fruit with a pit, we will eat it in just a second but really is our opportunity to think about our centers. You know, we know for these fruits that, that have the pit, the pit is at its center. But we ask us, what is at our center? What is at our core? The Kabbalists relate to the pit similar to the evil forces in the world. In humans, it is this kind of debate between the Yitzhar Hara and the Yitzhar Hatol. And sometimes that can be this battle that we have within ourselves or within, our, within ourselves. But yet the pit can also be the symbol of hope and strength. Even after the flower has faded, then, it, then we still have this core, which often becomes the basis for the new fruits, which will rise again. And this is a form of hope and persistence. We know that sometimes there are these difficult moments and from them growth can begin. And this persistence can lead to hope and can also be the spark of hope as well. And that hope can lead us on to our new paths. So I invite you now to think about and put into the chat what is at your core? What is at your center? What are some of those things that are the most important to you? So if you want to think about that, and if, as you are beginning to select our fruits that you can, I see perhaps we do not have olives with pits. 
Um, so do not eat those. But if you look in your bag, perhaps we also have dates or cherries or plums or apricots or something along. Uh, so, we have what? olives, but I chose to get ones without pits. So, so, so then, then olives. Just a fruit. You guys all know what a uh, <laughs> what knitted fruit is. So pretend we are eating those at the moment, um, and really think about what is at your core, because that is what this section of the seder represents. So please join in the blessing with me. Baruch Ata Adonai Elokeinu Melech Haolam Okay, um, and at this time, I'd like to introduce Andrea Burnett, who serves on our sisterhood board as the Lilith Sland director. She also heads up the IHC caring committee and serves on the IHC board. Andrea will lead us in the blessing on the second glass of wine. Thank you, Ruth. Now we are ready for our second glass of wine a warmer variety to announce the beginning of spring. Cherry and plum trees explode in delicate blossoms, just in time to feed the bees as they emerge from hibernation. May our hopes blossom as the winter thaws. Please join me in our blessing. Baruch Hata Adonai, Melech Halom, Hori Hari Hagafen. Melissa. It's your turn to tell us about this second tasting. I'm up. All right. Awesome. So wine number two is our Vintno Pinot, Vintner, excuse me, Pinot Grigio. So if you guys want to take a, another swirl and sniff, um, and if anybody wants to put in the chat what they smell or taste, um, this is on the opposite side of the spectrum to the Moscato. So this is one of our driest wines. It definitely is our driest white. Um, it has actually zero, um, zero residual sugars. So um, that is something kind of fun to know about wine too and about One Hope wine that in general, um, One Hope believes in doing good as you already know for others through giving back to nonprofits. But we also believe in doing good in general very much so like Judaism. And that is, that is part of every single aspect of our business. So our wines um, have no added sugars, no added preservatives, no added nothing. Um, they are all grapes and simply what happens in the winemaking process. Um, so while some of our wines do have sugar, they're all naturally occurring. Um, because we believe in doing good for the environment and our bodies and all of those things. So this one happens to have zero residual sugars in it, which is why it is as dry as it is. Um, I am a dry wine drinker, so this happens to be one of my favorites. Um, so the tasting profile of this one, um, oh, and I'm sorry, if you are drinking um, juice, this is your peach juice time. Um, so the tasting profile of the Pinot Grigio is, um, Juicy and fresh, it's fruity and has a crisp, clean finish, um, a little bit of minerality and fresh stone fruit. So this kind of um, paired philosophically well um, with this aspect of the Seder in pairing with stone fruit. Um, it pairs well with shellfish, grilled nectarines, lemon chicken, key lime pie, and mimosa popcorn. If any of you have ever had mimosa popcorn, I have not, but that is what our chef says it pairs well with. <laughs> um, so that is that one. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you. And, and maybe at the very end, if we have a second, I'd love to know once we've tasted all the wines, what is everybody's favorite? Because yes. um, <laughs> more just curious than anything else. Definitely. Um, so now we move on in our seder and very in just a moment we are going to be drinking our third glass of wine slash grape juice so if you want to get your third bottle ready and also in just a second we are going to be eating our fruits with a tough exterior so if you want to find your clementine or your kiwi um, in your bag um, go ahead and grab that and now as we are getting those ready we think about the tops of the trees which really represent the future this is the next generation in our families, in our community, in our congregation, in our organizations. 
The branches provide the canopy of shelter and they also adapt to new circumstances, which we know we are all having to do now more than ever. This also represents the way that we learn from younger people, which we know we do all the time. Um, I know many years ago, I couldn't use my iPhone, so I had to ask my teen helpers <laughs> to help me with it. And this is something that happens all the time in many different ways. We know that each autumn, the leaves fall, but they return in the spring once again. And that represents growth and change and new beginnings. The trees are never exactly the same year to year, but they build on the paths just like we do. The branches stretch out all around them, just like arms do. This creates often a sukkot shalom, a shelter of peace, but it also is a shelter of love and support and hope. It is like us wrapping our arms around our loved ones and our community. I have to share that I was at a conference this week and they had us, uh, it was a, supposed to be in person, it became a digital conference, and they had us all lift up our arms and pretend like we were touching the other screens next to us. And it was a little bit cheesy, but it was so nice to almost be able to, to, to virtually, metaphorically be able to reach out and touch each other's hands. And often, you know, I really believe trees and branches do that um, for us as well. And in addition to, to these trees, we do think about uh, the fruits that we have as part of our Seder. And we turn now to those fruits with the hard shells. The Kabbalists teach us that we are like trees as well because sometimes we need those hard shells around us for protection. There are times when those, freeze, those, those fruits need those protection through those hard shells, just like sometimes we too need a hard shell. But it is that hard shell that helps us and helps those fruits persist. We don't want our shells to cut us off from the other people and other things in our lives, but sometimes we want those shells to help protect what is most important to us and help keep us safe and also be a source of strength. So I invite you in the chat to put in, what is the source of your strength and what do you want that shell to help protect that is so important to you? And you can answer that in any way that you wish. Just really think about uh, the source of protection for you in your life. So as we go ahead to form our intention and as we think about those hard shells and how those do help us persist, we can hope that our inner selves persist and they will be well protected from evil and that we know that these shells are important but won't hopefully will not cut us off from others. So with that and all of the gifts that these shells can bring us in terms of protecting our insides, please aggress your clementine and say the blessing with me. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Bore Pari HaAretz. And now I'd like to welcome Sarah Cox, who serves as our Vice President of Communications. And she's also um, created our lovely sister to sister e-letter that we get the first of each month. Um, Sarah, please lead us in a blessing for the third cup. It's time for our third cup of wine or juice, a deep pink variety. As winter yields to spring and spring to summer, our world will change in ways we cannot begin to imagine. Seeds will become saplings, saplings will become towering trees. We give thanks for the turning of the seasons, for the birth of spring, for the growth of trees. Join me together in our blessing, Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, orei puri ha'gafen. Thank you, Sarah. Melissa, tell us a little bit about this rosé. Absolutely. So wine number three, we're on to the rosé. Um, so this one, go ahead and take your sip and sniff and, and or swirl and sniff and sip. Um, so this one um, has uh, the tasting profiles, fresh strawberry, crisp watermelon, hints of zesty orange uh, with a touch of sweetness to it. So it's interesting. Um, well, one, I get a lot of questions about this one because it tastes like strawberries um, and watermelon is very distinct fruits. Um, and as I mentioned before, there is, there's no flavors added. So this is truly what comes out in the winemaking process. And it, the flavors come from where the grapes are grown, 
Um, wine is so connected to, to the earth. Um, it's incredible that you can get, that we can get all these beautiful flavors from it. Um, I had the question when I first joined because I am allergic to strawberries, so I need to make sure I can drink the wine. Um, so this one pairs well, according to the experts, um, with baked ham, strawberry salad, grilled mm -hmm. tomatoes, and fresh herbs. Cheers. <laughs> okay, our next reader will be Victoria Hyatt Khan, who serves as our Sisterhood Registrar and records our membership contributions. We who have become cynical, hard shelled, whom life has raised with its tough fist of despair and disappointment and heartache and grief. We who have learned to protect our souls and toughen our hearts to compose ourselves in the face of relentless expectation. We who move through the world with cautious numbness, determined to succeed and keep moving. It is precisely for each of us, this holy day of Tu B'Shavat. This is our day of creative awe, when out of the frozen snow-hardened plant emerge tender succulent green shoots of hope and buds, swollen bulbs of promise that despite our best efforts to craft and protective armor, we are awed by a new life, by the plant's new roots and tendrils, awed that they and we might open ourselves to the coming spring and grow. And now, because we are virtual and aren't able to have these actual conversations with each other, We'd like to have an opportunity for us to get to know each other better. Perhaps you'll meet someone that you don't know. Okay. So welcome back. I see as everyone is returning back from their breakout sessions. So I'd love to know, were there any themes that came up in your breakout session, um, either out loud or in the chat, if you want to just like let the rest of us know who weren't in your breakout session, um, you know, just some connective tissue between, uh, between the people who spoke in your breakout session. So if anyone wants to go ahead and share, either unmute yourselves or put it in the chat. I'll share. Am I unmuted? Yeah. We had we had some over um, overlapping themes of um, sort of nature and being outside and um, using, uh, you know, re we had we had that a bit. You know, people who had had coped by getting outside, people who coped with surrounding themselves with plants. Um, and then also let's, and also sort of creativity and, um, yeah. I love that. All, all really, really great things to do. Andrea, please. I will share. Um, our group, we all agreed that this, we took this time to all of a sudden develop personal interests that we never found the time to do before. And, uh, all of a sudden we had that chance and, as some of them said, we could do it in private. So if we failed, no one would know. And this, and yet we, you know, all of a sudden we're successful in a new um, area. So I thought that was wonderful. I love that. That's awesome. And you also want to give us a little um, brief overview of your group. I will. We, um, we were able to talk about some of the, um, some of the things that we've been able to continue doing, like supporting Greenbrier Elementary, um, and not just the fact that we've found ways to continue doing that, but how much more meaningful it has been to both those families as well as to us to be able to continue that support. I love that. Any other, any other thoughts? Yeah, I'll share. Um, in our group, we, we talked about um, disappointment and um, and kind of dealing with that disappointment by um, some clarity and thinking about what the right choices are uh, for each of the people. We talked about um, the import importance of um, being in a um, a pod with family and being close with family. Um, and we talked about hope and gratitude. I love that. 
And I see there's a couple a couple of answers in the chat as well, hope and gratitude and discussing processes that have supported us um, and not just not just things, but attitudes as well. And I think um, that is so important as we persist, you know, not just through COVID, but all the things that come our way. I think all of those things are so, so incredibly important um, and helpful. And with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Ruth Anderson, the co-organizer of this amazing event, and the Sisterhood Recording Secretary. She's going to help us bless this final, final cup of wine. Except for you're on mute, Ruth. Maybe, maybe a little too much wine already. <laughs> yeah, too much. There's three sips I've taken so far. Okay, back to my, okay. Now we turn to our final glass, one deep, one deep red in color. Lightning strikes trees, branches ignite, glow with flame. The tree is consumed. Still a brighter light is hidden deep in its roots, protected from harm. Just when all seems lost, fresh, strong roots surprise us all, shooting for the sun. We too may be burned. We may think we won't recover, ashen and bent low, yet we hold tight, we hold on to our intentions, and in our roots and in our bones, we all give thanks. Please join me in the blessing. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech And Melissa, tell us about this fourth red wine. Ah, I had to get myself unmuted. Um, awesome. So this is our red blend. Um, so go ahead and take your, your swirl and your sniff and your sip. Mm, I definitely get in this one the berries. So the tasting profile for this is big and bold with complex berries and cocoa aromas. Um, and then it pairs well with arugula salad, barbecue ribs, berry pie, and grilled burgers is what this one goes well with. Um, this is definitely one of our most popular and a, a go-to in my home, that's for sure. Awesome. Thank you. Um, and I see on my notes that you might have just said it, but this also pairs really well with chocolate. It does. Well, it has the cocoa aromas as part of the tasting profile. So yes, it should go well with chocolate. <laughs> you tell me. I don't know why he's opened up my chocolate. <laughs> so we, before we conclude our um, annual, second annual to Bishvat Seder, um, this, we have this amazing wine and juice tasting. And Melissa, can you give us a little bit more information about ordering this wine um, so that Sisterhood can give, grow and give back a little bit more money through One Hope um, yes. to support um, causes in these really important ways? Yes, 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 absolutely. So as I mentioned before, um, we have a link set up where all orders will result in a donation um, that gets made to IHC Sisterhood. That um, URL is on your um, tasting menu at the bottom, um, as well as my information. If anybody has any questions or wants recommendations, I'm happy to um, tell you anything you want to know or make some recommendations based on what you usually like. Um, but if you go to the website, it's pretty darn user friendly. Um, you can search by reds, whites, dries, etc. Um, I will tell you, um, we have a dry January sale going on right now, our own sale on dry January, um, where you get 20% off of our dry wines. Um, so that's kind of cool. And what I'll tell you too is that um, I'll give you a little trick in ordering. So the more you order, the more you give back, and the more you save. So if you order four or more bottles, you will get lesser on shipping and you'll start to get discounts on the bottles and then anything that's on sale is on top of that um, but again when you're on the website and you start adding to your cart it'll show you um, at the bottom of your page what kind of discounts you're getting and it's really um, like I said user friendly um, so that is how you can give more to sisterhood by going ahead and ordering wine um, like I said, there's many other varietals um, outside of what we tasted today. So totally happy to make recommendations. 
questions. Um, also happy to do a tasting if you have wine loving friends and want to get, get some people together and continue to give back, you let me know. Um, and I think that that's it as far as what I wanted to share. So thank you so much for having me. Yeah, this has been great. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. Yeah. Um, and I'm just curious, Melissa did not ask me, I'm just genuinely curious, which was your <laughs> favorite wine? So put it in the chat. Um, I will share the first one was my favorite. So um, I just would love to know uh, which was your favorite. Again, just purely curiosity on my part. And I agree. I see there's a lot of uh, shout outs to Benny um, for the delicious, delicious uh, treats that you made. So thank you uh, for those. Thank you, everybody. At Chrismica, I ordered several bottles from Melissa and they are wonderful and they come beautifully packaged and with a wonderful catalog to reorder. So it was really great. In fact, I finished my last one. <laughs> Time for a refill. Yeah, I know, I know. I know. <laughs> but before we actually sign off, we have a few more uh, thoughts to offer. Um, we have blessed the wine, we have eaten the fruits, we have allowed the sparks to flow and return to the source. We have thought about our intentions and our perseverance, and hopefully through all of that we will grow even stronger and even taller together. I hope that the sparks of holiness will continue to flow all around us, and not only sparks of holiness, but also sparks of hope and perseverance and community and love, and that will be, will be continue to be like the trees with our branches spread it out, connecting so deeply to one another. As you know, often the Torah is called the tree of life. It's Haim He Lama Hazikima. It is a tree of life through all who will fast to it, and all of its supporters are happy. And hopefully this will be our case too, that as we wink our way through this, we will continue to find the ways to spread the lights and support each other and hold each other up. So I just want to offer my personal thanks for allowing you um, to be spend this time with you this afternoon. And I got a lovely little uh, gift bag dropped off to me. So I want to say thank you for that as well. It is always enjoyable and uplifting uh, to spend uh, time with all of you. Um, and before we actually close up, it is my great honor to turn it over to Risa Friedman, um, our, our very strong, very persistent, fabulous sisterhood. And uh, my family would add stubborn. <laughs> like those trees that you just can't get rid of. Um, thank you, Rabbi Jordana. Thank you, our program co-chairs, Sonia and Ruth. And thank you to all of our volunteers and our participants this afternoon for this beautiful Seder. Let me close with one of my favorite stories from the Talmud and also from Torah Talk. One day, Honey the Circle Maker was walking on the road and saw an old man planting a carob tree. Do you think you will live to eat the fruit of this tree? He asked. Perhaps not, the old man replied, but when I was born into this world, I found many carob trees planted by my father and grandfather. Just as they planted trees for me, I am planting trees for my children and grandchildren, so they will be able to eat the fruit of these trees. Our sisterhood is like those carob trees. We are 104 years old, and we owe much to those founding women and to the women who came in the successive generations afterwards and continued the IHC sisterhood legacy over the years. Like the man in Honey's story, it is incumbent upon us as current sisterhood members to ensure our continuation and the future of IHC sisterhood, la door the door. We make connections between generations through creating new programs like today's Seder and the upcoming second annual Majathon. And by continuing beloved longstanding programs like our gift shop, the women's Seder, Sip and Shop, the ways we support our temple, how we support Greenbrier School, and support 
to the Jewish community and Indianapolis community. What we do now today shapes what IHC sisterhood will be in the future. What we are doing today is celebrating a holiday, albeit not exactly in the way we would prefer, but in a way that shows how we honor and create tradition and persevere even during an epidemic. And as evidence of our perseverance, here are some announcements and reminders for upcoming programs. Well, one thing, um, it's still perseverance because it will occur. Sadly, both Sisterhood Nefesh Shabbat and our Women's Seder have been postponed, but not to worry. We will be back and have those events when we can do it, hopefully in person and do it safely. And upcoming events, you do not want to miss the class Rabbi Roxanne has created just for us. What does this say about us? Dirty Little Secrets of the Bible and Talmud. This, um, these classes will uncover some of the most risque and sometimes disturbing stories we probably did not learn in our early years. The class runs for four Wednesday evenings starting February 3rd. It's included in your IHC membership. Register by calling or emailing Beth at IHC. And as I mentioned, our second annual virtual Mahjong Madness um, Mahjathon takes place Sunday, February 6th. We're calling out all Maj mavens near and far. Do not let geography limit who attends. Connect your family from far and wide across the U.S. and abroad. Um, it will be a day of fun, friendship, a little bit of fundraising for our projects and programs. And because it's virtual, that means anyone can play. And if you don't play, you can still join in for the opening and the closing. And I think it would be permissible for those not playing to also um, make a contribution and to be part of the door prize drawing. Find out details and sign up at ihcindorg slash Mahjong. You must re register by January 21st. And now for some really, really good news. It's Humantashen ordering time. Yay for those Gregors. You can order online or use the form in your bag if you're ordering online. It's at uh, ihcindy.org slash uh, con Please place your orders for the wonderful baked treats by February 20th. The sooner you place, the sooner you will be guaranteed of having your order um, fulfilled. And this year we're only taking um, pre-orders. So there won't be um, any ability to pick them up at the temple. And um, there's another program coming in April, starting April 20th, that runs for four weeks by our own stellar Rabbi Jord Jordana. And Sisterhood is proud to partner with Rabbi Jordana on an adult education class called Jewish Holidays Through Women's Stories. And if you've taken some of Rabbi Jordana's previous classes connected with female themes, take this one too. Um, she's sure not to let us down. Again, register with Beth um, by phone or email uh, for this class as well. And now I'd like to um, turn it back to Ruth. But before doing that, Rabbi, I want to personally, and I think on behalf of all of us here today, thank you so much for putting yesterday's catastrophic um, scenario that fortunately ended as well as it could, um, putting it in a perspective that could uh, make some 
possible plausible sense for us and helping us relate our feelings to those kinds of events. So thank you so much. And now to Ruth, one of the co-sponsors, developers, of this delightful, enjoyable program this afternoon. Thanks, Risa. Um, I am only gonna take one more minute and then we are all free to go and enjoy our dinners. Um, but since we're at the conclusion, I want it to um, let you know that I'm sure you've all looked in your swag bags, but there's some extra treats. Um, the date bar that Benny Silver made is just amazing. There's some nuts because you always have to have some nuts at Tuba Shabbat. And we gave you each a small uh, keychain, as my cousin called it, a tree chain. So it's a little tree that you can carry with you wherever you go. Yeah. Um, and I, I too would like to thank um, Rabbi Jordana and Melissa for um, helping us with this program. We've given um, each of them a gift. Rabbi Jordana got some gardening items and a, um, they both got a gift certificate to the Allisonville Sullivan's Nursery so that we can um, bring spring along as soon as possible. And with that, I would like to say thank you and have a wonderful evening. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. That was fantastic. I loved it. Oh, wonderful. Yes. Thanks. Marcia, hopefully we'll see you more often. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Good for us. I think it was really nice. Thank you, ladies. Um, I'll, um, I'll send out the link. I saw that Melissa put it in, but I'll send out a thank you note from all of us uh, with the link. And um, I'll also put in, I'll go back into the recording and I'll upload it to the YouTube, uh, our channel, uh, to our playlist. And then I'll send that in case anybody wants to watch it. But I think it was really great. I do too. Um, so it's just lovely. I think really uplifting. I think really, you know, met people exactly where they were and what they needed today. So that was good and short and sweet. Yeah, your, your words were great, Rabbi. They were great. Thank you. All right. Thank you, ladies. Okay. Bye, good everyone. job, Ruth. Bye bye. Okay. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the.